This is part two of our KTM two-stroke top end rebuild. If you need help with this assembly, be sure and watch part one of the series. Hey guys, Chance here, filling in for Steve, finishing up the KTM 300 two-stroke top end rebuild. So we had just removed this cylinder from the motor. We've scrubbed it down real nicely. And so the next thing on our list is take, a pal take apart the power valve assembly. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. To start off with, we're gonna take our five millimeter Allen and we're gonna remove the exhaust flange. Okay, now that we have those four bolts removed from this exhaust flange, we can take a rubber mallet and lightly tap on it until it comes off. It is silicone to the face of the cylinder, so we do need to be careful. Now that we have that exhaust flange removed, we can go ahead and wipe down any excess oil that's coming out, and then we're gonna start disassembling the power valve. We'll start by just loosening this inner Allen bolt, and then we'll go ahead and remove this outer one that's in the power valve shaft. Now that I've loosened this inner bolt and removed this outer bolt, I can then remove these plates from the power valve assembly. Okay, from there, we can now go ahead and take our T25 Torx bit and remove this retaining plate. Once we have that retaining plate removed, we can then go ahead and pull out this gear assembly. We want to make sure that we keep the left and right gears separate. Now, once we have this left side completely removed, we can go ahead and remove this five millimeter Allen from the right side. Now, when we go ahead and take this off, we do need to be careful. This bolt is under tension from the spring. So we want to make sure we keep some good tension on it. Now we can remove the retaining plate. And just like the left side, we can go ahead and take our T25 Torx bit and remove this retaining plate. Now, once I take out that retaining plate, I can go ahead and take out this gear assembly, making sure that I know that this is on the right side. Then once all of that is removed, I can go ahead, take both my thumbs and carefully press on this until the power valve comes out. Now from here, we'll go ahead and take our power valve and disassemble it and get it ready for cleaning. As you can see, it is quite dirty. There is a lot of carbon buildup, but this is pretty normal for a two stroke. So from here, we're gonna go ahead, take off the sleeves, and then we can take our pick and remove the two O-rings that sit just inside. Now, while we have our pick, we can also go ahead and remove the four O-rings that sit on the cylinder. Now that we have the cylinder completely stripped down, the great time to go and wash it again. Make sure you scrub down all of the orifices, make sure you get all the oil and the old silicone off this face. Now that we have all of our parts cleaned, we're gonna begin the assembly of the power valve. To do so, we're gonna use a tusk top end gasket kit to replace all of the O-rings in the power valve. Now we have all the O-rings installed on our power valve assembly. Next, it's time to install the O-rings into the cylinder. Some people like to use a little dab of grease in order to hold the O-rings into place. However, I'm gonna use a little bit of high temp silicone because I don't want grease interfering with the silicone that I'll be placing on this surface. Moving on to installing our power valve. First, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some grease, grease up the O-ring, grease up the shaft of the power valve, and also grease up the mounting surface on the cylinder. And before I install it, I'll then take a collar, make sure the inside diameter and outside diameter are greased up and slide it on. Moving on, we are now gonna install the control flaps back into the cylinder with the gears facing the back side of the motor. Before I do so, I'm gonna take a little bit of grease grease up the o-ring and then I'll go ahead and press that into place. Don't worry about the location of the gears quite yet. We're going to be timing this a little bit later. Now we'll do the same process on the other side. Take a control flap, grease up the o-ring, 
and install it. Now that we have those control flaps in place, we'll go ahead and take our retaining plate, set it into place, and then we'll take our small Torx head screws, apply a little bit of medium strength thread locker, and then go ahead, hand tighten them, then torque them to 5.2 foot pounds. Now repeat this on the other side. Staying on the right side of the motor, we're now going to install the gear assembly and we're going to do so piece by piece. So we're going to take this base plate with the interlocking gears and before we install this we need to first align the power valve and the control flap gears. We need to align them so they're in a perfectly straight line horizontally. Once they're in line, we take the base plate, we can install it on the power valve flap and make sure the gears interlock. From there we'll take our stepped washer, install it from the bottom up into our second plate and this medium hole will slide over the post. From there, we'll go ahead and take our spring, our other collared washer, and our Allen head bolt. We'll apply a little bit of medium strength thread locker to this bolt. And the end of this bolt will slide through the second plate, through the collared washer, and into the end of the power valve shaft. And we'll just thread this in by hand just a little bit. Now that we have this Allen bolt hand tightened, we need to tension the spring. So the long side of the spring should rest against both this middle post and this outer ball post. Now in order to tension this, what I'd like to use is a Tusk exhaust spring puller. It allows me to grab onto the short end of this spring and pull it up over that post. Now that our spring is tensioned, we can go ahead and tighten that Allen bolt to 7.4 foot pounds. Now from here, we'll go ahead, flip it over, and do the other side. Again, we'll want the power valve shaft in line with this control flap gear. We'll now go ahead and take our interlocking gear plate assembly, apply a little bit of medium strength thread locker, and then we need to go ahead and interlock both the gears and the power valve shaft. We'll just go ahead and hand tighten this bolt because we still need to adjust the power valve. Now we just need to install the exhaust flange. So we'll go ahead, flip the cylinder around, and from here, I'm gonna take the exhaust flange itself, and on the sealing surface, I'm gonna apply a very thin layer of high temp silicone. Now that I have this thin layer of silicone on the exhaust flange, I'm gonna take a little bit of grease, and being careful not to mess up any of my silicone, I'm going to grease up the races. Now we'll go ahead and place the exhaust flange onto the cylinder. Now that we have this exhaust flange pressed on, we're going to go ahead and install the bolts and tighten them down. However, on this bike, we're going to install a Tusk exhaust flange support, so this would be a great time to do that. We'll go ahead and thread these in by hand. And then when we're ready, we'll go ahead and torque them to 7.4 foot-pounds. Now as we go ahead and torque these down, we want to make sure that we have the exhaust spring hangers in the correct locations, just like this. We have everything assembled now. Now is the time to set our Z measurement. We're going to take a very handy tool. It's the Nihilo Concepts deck slash timing tool. And we're going to use this to measure our power valve height. Now this tool will function for both 250cc and 300cc two-stroke motors. So today, we're going to be using the side with the notch in it for the 300cc two-stroke. So starting our measurement, we'll take this indent with this notch, place it into our cylinder, and rest this ledge against the deck. Once that's in contact with the deck, we can take our other hand, we can grab the power valve assembly, and lower it until it grabs a hold of the tool. And once that comes into contact, that's going to be the proper height. Once we have that pressed down and tight against the measuring tool, 
we can then take this flap, push it down, and then at this point, we can then tighten the two Allen bolts to 7.4 foot-pounds. We're going to start with that inner bolt, then we'll work our way out to the outer bolt. This was part two of our KTM two-stroke top-end rebuild. If you need help with reassembly, be sure and watch part three of the series.